Yeah, that was my reaction when I first started screenwriting and found out that Word completely sucks for it and specialized software like Final Draft costs about 300 euro or is a paid monthly subscription. Thankfully for you, I have found a solution which is not only completely free, but also gets you the standardized screenplay output format and is easily portable when you want to share it with another collaborator so you don't have to worry if they don't have the same paid software that you do. Let's have a look at it. Okay, that's enough salesman talk for now. So now I'm going to show you what I was talking about. Basically, it's a two part process. We need Visual Studio Code, which is an editor for basically any kind of text. It is uh, primarily used by programmers, but don't worry, no programming whatsoever required for what we are doing now. So here I'm showing you the website of Visual Studio Code. You can download it for free for any platform, Windows, Linux, Mac, and yeah, just push the big button for the appropriate platform for you. And just in case you have never installed a program before, which I doubt, then I will show you the installation process as well. If not, uh, you can skip to the next time marker. Here we start with the installation. Obviously we accept the license agreement without ever reading it. I just hope I just didn't sell my firstborn son to Microsoft. And click OK, OK. And here in this menu, you can choose a few advanced options, which is mostly necessary if you plan on using uh, Visual Studio Code for other kind of text files, which I can recommend. It's really great, very customizable, lots of options and it's everything is all for free. So yeah, let's quickly speed up this installation and proceed to the next point. Okay, now that code is up and running, the next thing we need to do is to install the right extension. So code uh, already has lots of different features, but you can even extend the functionality for all kinds of different text formats that you want to use via extensions. It's really cool. It's got a lot of different features. And for what we want to do right now, we want to head over to the extension menu, which you find uh, this icon at the side. Uh, with the uh, building blocks. Okay, so as soon as we're at the extensions menu, uh, you just have to type in fountain and look for the extension better fountain. So here it is. I already got it installed. So this will look a bit different for you, but it's self-explanatory. Just press the install button and wait for a moment and the extension will be installed. A shout out to Pierre de Seligny at this point who has written Better Fountain for free. Thanks, man. So now you will notice that the sidebar contains another icon now with the F. This is for Fountain or Better Fountain. And below you can see uh, that there's a few new features available. And now I'm basically starting to write the first script. So the way Fountain works is it's just a, a very simple language which is dependent on certain formatting rules. So basically, as long as you stick to those rules, format will always be, uh, a fountain will always be able to put out the document in the right screenplay formatting that we are looking for. So basically in the standardized American Hollywood screenplay format. And the way it works is, for example, if you put in title, like up here with a colon and followed by a title, you already see that this is highlighted in different colors. So this is a good sign. This means that it is recognized as part of this markup. And this title will basically turn to the title line on the cover page of the finished script. So I'll enter a title and an author, Darth Vader. And let's start with a scene in a living room. Uh, I'm getting inspired from uh, Joey Triviani on Friends. So a man enters a room and he's got a suspicious look on his face, as Joey put it. And yeah, I'm writing out this scene a little bit. So basically, if you write standard text without anything like here, then it becomes an action. So then it becomes descriptive text uh, that explains your scene. 
Um, as, uh, when you start a line with int or ext, then the program is smart enough to know that this is a scene heading and uh, you do the usual location and uh, datetime stuff after that, pretty much in the standardized format. It's just important that the int or ext is written in capital letters and followed by a dot. And as you can see in the sidebar, the outline automatically recognizes int living room night as our first scene. So if we got multiple scenes, then this, uh, they all will show up here. And in a long screenplay, you can basically use this like a link and jump from scene to scene, which makes life a little bit easier. So now that the man has entered with a suspicious look on his face, uh, we get to our first dialogue, our first character speaking. His name is Joseph and it's just important that Joseph is written in all caps and gets his own line. And right after I'll do a line break, so enter once and start writing dialogue. And as you'll see, the dialogue gets its own color as well. So basically this is all already recognized by the language as being dialogue and as belonging to a, a character speaking. Now that Joseph has talked, let's enter another scene. So next scene takes place at the playground in daytime. And as you see in the outline, it gets immediately recognized and the outline is added another scene. And by the way, this outline and the scene headings will also be taken over to the final PDF. So when you open this up in a new version of Acrobat, uh, you will also have these scene headings and can jump to, through them with, link, with a link, which is really nice. So, and now let's just have a look if we have another character. So, let's say Rachel joins and has a talk with Joseph. So now the two characters uh, are talking and uh, we press enter twice after Rachel's dialogue. Uh, Joseph will be the next auto suggestion by the program because the program assumes that uh, yeah, one character speaks, then the other speaks, and then the first one speaks again. But uh, of course, you can put in whatever you want. The suggestions are not binding. An important thing to note is here you are basically working in a, in a text only file. And that means, unlike Word, you're not able to select words and then make them bold or put them to italics or something like that. That doesn't work. But you can still uh, do that stuff and have them in the finished PDF. You just need to get used to a different style of working. So basically, if we want to put something, some text in bold letters, then you just have to surround that part of the text with two asterisks. These are the little stars, and then in the PDF it's gonna be fat, uh, it's gonna be bold. Sorry, when I say fat, that's uh, because in German it's fat, <laughs> but yeah. And there is much more of those kind of rules. And in the second link I'm gonna include for you, there is a little tutorial on Fountain. It's pretty easy. You can just click through it. It's text based, and I didn't want to make this video too long by going through all of it. It's pretty self-explanatory. So finally, let's see how all of this will look like as an output file. So basically, you can uh, have a look at the live preview here. This works nicely, but only for some reason the text appears much bigger than it actually is on the final PDF. I don't know why, but the good news is the final PDF looks just perfect. So if you go to export PDF, uh, it will create a file based on that text and this file will adhere to the typical screenplay formatting rules and you can even export the PDF with highlighted character names so if you wanna have a version for a certain actor uh, and highlight their character it's quite easy to do here and yeah that's that. One more thing about uh, portability so this text file uh, that's the base for the screenplay um, you don't have to open it in Visual Studio Code. Basically, you can open it in any text editor of your choosing, even in the standard ones that are pre-installed on your operating system. You will not have the highlighting there, but it still is the same thing, the same script. And as long as you adhere to the simple formatting rules of Fountain, 
you can use any editor and this makes it very easy to share your scripts with somebody else or to even work together on scripts and you don't have to worry that somebody might not have the expensive screenwriting software that you are using maybe so this is also why i switched to this solution for higher portability and it's a great advantage of fountain so i hope this was helpful to you I have a total of 30 subscribers at the moment, so I would really appreciate it if you could click that subscribe button down there. Und wenn ihr eine deutsche Version dieses Videos benötigt, dann lasst es mich bitte in den Kommentaren wissen. Et si vous avez besoin d'une version française de ces vidéos, laissez-moi savoir dans la section des commentaires. Ou si necesitan una version española de este video, déjenme saberlo en los comentarios. And in the near future, I plan to post more stuff on how I approach story writing. But if you need it, I can also help you out with DaVinci Resolve, getting started in editing or languages or whatever. There are some stuff that I know. Let me know what you need and you're welcome. Bye bye.